Tonight, after a fire at a popular local brewery, the Lincoln Park neighborhood is coming together to help the owners recover. And the Minneapolis City Council has taken the first steps in disbanding their police department. What does it mean for the future? We have the answers. Plus, a house fire in Superior tonight. What we know about the blaze that resulted in smoke being seen for miles. From CBS 3 Duluth, this is the CBS 3 News at 10. Good evening, I'm Anthony Mack. Kristen is off tonight. Thanks for joining us. A show of support tonight in Lincoln Park's Craft District after a fire at a brewery overnight. This was a scene this afternoon outside of Ursa Minor. An overnight fire in a shed left behind about $75,000 in damages, including to a company vehicle and some equipment. Thankfully, nobody was hurt, but the damage was extensive enough that they had to close their patio today. CBS 3's Kendall Jarbo shows us how the neighborhood is pulling together to support one of their own. A fiery night for Ursa Minor. Around 1 a.m., flames sparked in their shed. Founder Ben Hugus says they don't know how it started. But it went really quick, and it burned the whole thing to the ground. And we're really counting ourselves just lucky that it didn't breach to the inside. Friday afternoon, the damage is easier to see. The shed, gone. Some key brewing equipment, destroyed. You can see our fantastic forklift. We are so proud to have that little bad boy. No, um, I don't think she's going to run again. Out of the ashes, a growing show of support from other businesses in Lincoln Park. Honestly, we just are find, feel very blessed at the moment with the response that the community's had and support for what we're doing. Among those offering help, Wild State Cider and local band One Last Guess. All the musicians around here love Ursa Minor. The band was supposed to play at Ursa Minor tonight. Instead, they held a concert at the Cidery, collecting donations. It seemed like the right thing to do when... They've, they're this is such a great part of like this community, you know. So we're just trying to give back how we can. Hugus says the solidarity is just one of the reasons he's proud to be part of the Lincoln Park neighborhood. We make beer to bring people together, and you know, uh, it's it's doing that. Even though we have an, had an unfortunate incident. No word yet on what caused the fire. Ursa Minor lost a key piece of brewing equipment, though, which means they can't make beer right now and they can't save what was already brewing. They are hopeful to have their patio back open tomorrow and be able to start brewing beer again next week. Meanwhile, a home in Superior was badly damaged tonight after catching fire. The Superior Fire Department was called to the neighborhood of 6th Street and Grand Avenue just after 7 p.m. When crews arrived, they found visible smoke and flames coming from the back upper level of the building. Firefighters began attacking the flames from the ground and above with a ladder truck. The smoke plume could be seen for miles. Surrounding homes had minimal water and smoke damage. According to fire officials, the flames were contained to the home. At this point, we have significant fire damage to the upper level of the structure and uh, significant water damage to the lower level. So uh, we're making a determination as to the structural integrity and the amount of the loss at this point. No one was home at the time of the fire. Crews say they believe some pets died, but don't know how many at this time. As of just about a half hour ago, crews were still on scene working to put out hot spots. The cause is under investigation. Our very dry start to summer has the Forest Service warning campers of the growing wildfire threat. Today, Superior National Forest officials said the current drought conditions are similar to the high fire years of 2006 and 2011. In 2011, the Pagami Creek Fire burned nearly 100,000 acres in the BWCA. The Forest Service says campfires are still allowed, but they're asking people to use extra caution and limit fires to nighttime only. And we'll go to Dave for a look at weather. Dave, I feel like we've been talking about those drought conditions for a long time, and they didn't get much better today. Yeah, upwards of six months, frankly, we've been talking yeah. about dry weather. Winter wouldn't have had much snow if it wasn't for that blizzard mm -hmm. the past November. Yeah. So the drier weather continues, and now it's warmer to boot. Here's a look at the high temps today. In Wisconsin and Michigan, they ran from 82 to 88 degrees. And Minnesota wasn't too far behind, 79 to 86. The normal's around 73, 74. Warmer weather like this likely will be with us for an entire week. Now let's get a look at the satellite picture here for the upper Midwest. Low pressure that fizzled on us yesterday is departing. Higher pressure comes in for the weekend to make it sunny and warm. And our weekend forecast then indicates partly cloudy tonight, mostly sunny through Sunday, high temps in the 80s, staying that way next week. But some more rain chances do come as early as early Monday morning. We'll talk about if they'll pay off or not coming up in a few more minutes. Thanks, Dave. With the 12 nothing vote, the Minneapolis City Council has taken the first step towards disbanding the city's police department. The vote removes the requirement for a police department from the city charter. Susan Elizabeth Littlefield explains what this means for the future. 
Minneapolis Police Department is likely the most talked about department in the country, a department that could be dismantled. In a unanimous vote, 12 council members agreed to move to amend the charter that protects the department. For us to be able to keep our residents safest, we need to be able to actually do the work in an open, democratic way, mm -hmm. which currently that is not the case. One after another, council members made suggestions on creating a new kind of department with more community input in different kinds of non-armed responders to domestic or mental health calls. And that we have an opportunity to really do something in Minneapolis that hasn't been done before. And that if we engage the public, if we're smart about what we uh, about how we uh, engage the pu the public and then design and implement these programs, we're actually going to make people safer. Council members want the city charter amended so the dismantling could go to a vote. This amendment to our legal city charter does not provide clarity. There are more questions that I have regarding this amendment than answers. The mayor came out swinging, doubling down on his support of current chief, Medaria Arredondo. I'm standing by our chief, and to the extent that this amendment demotes him or relieves him of power or makes it even more difficult for him because he's now got to report to 14 different people, a structural change that was done without any form of community engagement, I think that's all a problem. The mayor says he believes change is deeply needed, and he and the chief have a plan to rebuild the current department. Council members say they will push to let voters make the ultimate call in November. It was the first step in a long process, but it's a critical step in the right direction. As you heard there, the city's mayor, Jacob Fry, does not support the move to disband the department, but he has said he believes change is deeply needed, and he and the chief have a plan to rebuild the current department. Thousands of Minnesota National Guard soldiers are headed to California for a training exercise. They're heading to Fort Irvin, Irwin. It's readiness training in the event they need to deploy. This year's mission will be different given the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. California has seen a growing number of cases. Now, Major John Jayquay says all the soldiers will be tested and isolated if need be. They'll be training in bubble units, and the location is very remote. That's what makes it hard and challenging, but that's also a good thing in terms of the COVID-19 you know, COVID and the virus, right? We won't be in a high traffic area. It's going to be in the, in the desert in, in um, inland California. The soldiers will be in California for about a month from July 5th through August 5th. New at 10, Duluth-based technology company Iconics announced it will furlough more than 30 of their 81 employees. The company says they've lost revenue during the pandemic. The furlough will last until July 31st. Employees did find out yesterday, and furloughed employees will still receive some benefits. Texas is shutting back down after a surge in coronavirus cases. Bars will be shutting down, and restaurant dining will be scaled back. The move comes after Texas reported more than 20,000 new confirmed cases in the last four days. In Houston, hospitals are running out of space. The city is considering using a stadium complex as an overflow. The news comes as testing increases and new cases topped 40,000 in the country today. Locally, St. Louis County health officials say they've seen a slight increase in COVID-19 cases over the last two weeks, but overall, things are trending downwards. More specifically, this past week, 10 new COVID-19 cases have been reported. St. Louis County Public Health Director Amy Westbrook says overall 40% of the reported cases are among residents or staff at congregate care settings. As a state, Westbrook says there's been a decline over the last month that continues for this week. The U.S. Attorney's Office sent out a warning tonight. Be on the lookout for fraudulent COVID-19 posts. The department says scammers are offering cards like these, declaring the holder exempt from wearing a mask in places they're required. The cards include the Department of Justice seal. Now, DOJ reps say they have not authorized its use and the cards are not valid. Misusing the department seal is a federal crime. The CDC recommends people wear masks in public to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Teens who rely on seasonal summer jobs were left in limbo during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, Duluth Workforce Development Center is helping connect them with new opportunities and putting them onto the path to success. The Youth Employment Services Program, also known as YES, helps connect teens and young adults with education, training, and employment services. Applicants are placed at a host site, like the Boys and Girls Club, to help out. Then, the program follows up with the teens for two more years to make sure they're successful. The program was on hiatus during the pandemic, but organizers and the teens who rely on them are thankful it's back. 
Still to come on Live Local CBS3 is COVID-19 and the summer months intersect a double dose of concern why Lyme's disease is more alarming this year. Record low temperature is 36 degrees from 1982. We won't be worrying about record lows for the next week. We could be tickling the record highs on a couple of days. We'll talk about a warm, perhaps humid period coming up here with some rain showers coming aboard too, eventually. All that after the break. Live, local, CBS3 News at 10 with Kristen Vockey, Anthony Matt, Kelly Hinson, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live, local, CBS3. The nursing program at Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College is really challenging, but it has to be. It's approved by the Board of Nursing. And graduates here have been successfully passing the state board exam. They give you real-world experience with healthcare institutions across the community. I'm really glad I chose Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College. Hi, John with Prime Appliance. It's our Grand Slam sale. We've hit it out of the park again four months in a row with super savings and another big 6% instant rebate on all in-stock appliances. Save over $1,600 on this high-end Beko four-piece kitchen suite and smudge-free stainless. Includes a French store refrigerator with ice and water, an electric convection slide in range, a high temperature ultra quiet dishwasher, and a convection over the range microwave. Just $56.37 after instant rebate. Prime Appliance is the best place to buy your appliances. Let us prove it to you. Every second, 127 new devices connect to the internet. You can feel it happening. Our digital world expanding with every breath. We're entering a whole new era of technology. And Mediacom will be ready to power it. All of it. With one of the nation's first supercharged 10G platforms. We'll be lighting up cities, big and small. Wherever you are, whatever your connectivity needs, we'll be bringing you more speed, more capacity, more security, and the power to do more than you ever dreamed possible. Tune in Saturday mornings for the Link RV lineup, where we will show you amazing RVs on our lot, like this 2020 Jayco Bunkhouse Travel Trailer with fiberglass sidewalls, bunk beds, and more for just $172 a month. Or check out this 2020 Jayco Eagle Half Ton Topol Fifth Wheel for only $333 a month. Want to see more? Then be sure to watch this Saturday. Visit us online at linkrvdirect.com or stop by to view our complete inventory. We have the largest selection of RVs in northwestern Wisconsin. Link RV, where reputation is everything. I chose a career that isn't easy, it's dangerous, and it's hard. Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College has set me up with everything I need to succeed. Through challenging classes, longer defensive tactics training, and instructors who work in the industry, Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College is setting me up for success. Catch Eye on Parenting every Thursday at 6 with me, Leanne Valdez on CBS3. Now, the CBS3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. You know, the relative humidity isn't that great at gauging how humid and muggy it is out there. It's relative. 50% relative humidity at 30 degrees is a lot different animal than 50% at 80 degrees. So the dew point's really a better gauge. And when you get your dew points into the 50s, it starts to feel a bit humid by our Northland standards. And when you get into the 60s, then it does start to become uncomfortable for us Northerners. And you look around our region, we have 50s in Minnesota, 60s in Wisconsin. And when you cross the threshold into 70s, it's really humid and there's a lot of latent heat combined into that water vapor that could be turned into storm fuel lift we're getting close to that down in madison 69 degrees so we've got the fuel but we don't have the lift right now that's why we missed out on the showers and storms last night and now with higher pressure coming in it'll be warm and humid but we won't get a rain chance probably until monday we do need the rain of course you don't need me to tell you that every day but I guess I will anyway. Our next rain chance, that's on Monday. And if it comes, it might stick around through about Thursday. Right now at the airport, the current temp is 71. And the relative humidity, in case you're interested, is 61%. That is a bit juicy, all right. Westerly, northwesterly winds going 8 miles per hour. And right now, the temperatures in the upper peninsula are in the upper 60s. And we have upper 60s to low 70s here in northwestern Wisconsin. The warm spots are Hayward at 70 and Superior at 71. Proctor's got that 71 as well. 
Mid 60s up the North Shore here, low 60s on the Vermilion Range, 68 degrees Hibbing, 69 Grand Rapids, 66 International Falls. It may be a bit of a muggy night here tonight and frankly will stay warm and perhaps a little bit humid all the way through next week. So we're staring July in the face and it's staring back and bringing us summery style weather. All right, what do we have right now Doppler map wise? Well, that low pressure system from last night brought most of its precip to folks in Ontario and then southern and central Wisconsin as well and bypassed most of the rest of us with only a couple of sprinkles. And now it's on the way out of here. Higher pressure settling in for the weekend. It's going to keep it sunny and dry both Saturday and Sunday. And like I mentioned, our next rain chance comes around Oh, uh, maybe late Sunday night, early Monday morning. Couple of troughs of lower pressure up aloft, not full-fledged lows, but enough action, enough lift to perhaps bring us 40 to 60 percent shower and storm chances Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and the best chance comes on Thursday when it's a 60 percent shot for something that just actually might finally make it to the ground tonight. Nothing makes it to the ground. Partly cloudy up aloft. Low temps run from mid-50s to low 60s in Minnesota. And for Wisconsin and Michigan, the temps there, low-wise, 55 to about 60. And into tomorrow, it'll be mostly sunny for Wisconsin and the UP with highs from 80 to 86. And Minnesota high temps will be around 85, 86 inland, 70s by the lake. Extended forecast shows warm and summery through Sunday. And then a little cloudier, perhaps a little stormier. Like I mentioned, from Monday through Thursday, Thursday the best chance for a payoff with rain, staying in the 80s for the most part all the way through next Friday. And by next Friday, it could even be mid-80s here at the head of the lakes, Tony, which I'm thinking means farther inland, we will cross that sometimes hard to get 90 degree threshold for better or for worse. We'll certainly keep an eye on that. Thanks, Dave. With summertime weather in full swing, many Minnesotans are excited to get outdoors. But with social distancing sending even more people out into the woods, health officials are preparing for an uptick in Lyme disease cases and even warning of the similarities between COVID-19 and Lyme disease symptoms. Lisa Meadows has a story for us tonight. The COVID-19 quarantine has caused cabin fever for many Minnesotans. So with summertime weather in full swing, many of us are excited to get outdoors. But with social distancing sending even more people out into the woods, health officials are preparing for an uptick in Lyme disease cases. This is about, you know, usually about the time you start seeing more testing is around this time because of the, you know, month or so ago of people getting it. Unfortunately, the similarities between the symptoms of Lyme disease and COVID-19 can be confusing. With any type of infection, fever, body aches, um, just weariness, being tired all the time. Those are really the big ones that are going to be similar. The key is to recognize the differences. With Lyme disease, the, the, the big difference is that you don't get the shortness of breath, you don't get the, the loss of taste, um, but then you, you can get the, the rash around the bite site. A telltale sign of Lyme disease is a bullseye rash around the bite site. But some patients never develop a rash, making Lyme disease difficult to diagnose, meaning a test could be your best bet. It's a Lyme disease screen that checks to see if there's Lyme disease currently infected in your body. You can even save the tick and get that tested instead. So even if you got bit by a tick and it's, it was on your skin for, or in you for more than 24 hours, which is a standard incubation period for a tick in your, in your body, um, you can test the tick. If the tick is negative for Lyme's, then potentially there's no way for you to get Lyme. The CDC typically reports a spike in Lyme disease cases in the months of June, July, and August. Unique projects aimed at promoting the outdoors and beautifying Cook County could have to take a back seat for a while. For the past four years, the Cook County Chamber has raffled off a locally built canoe as part of its Great Place project. The money raised is used to give grants to unique projects that promote outdoor activities. But those raffle tickets are normally sold at events like the Wooden Boat Show in Grand Marais, which have had to be canceled this year. Now the Cook County Chamber of Commerce is hoping people will donate so the grants can keep coming. Without, without donations this year, we simply won't be able to make grants to um, the Cook County groups and individuals and businesses who traditionally submit applications for um, a Great Place Project grants. As for this beautiful canoe right here, the sale of raffle tickets virtually is not allowed in Minnesota. So they plan on selling the tickets next summer at those events. Information on how to donate is on our website. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, a historic day on Capitol Hill. Why D.C. could become the 51st state.
CBS3 live cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. Schneiderman's helps you celebrate life's happiest moments when everyone has a spot, even spot. It's BOGO time at Schneiderman's. Buy one item and get another half off during the 4th of July sale at Schneiderman's Furniture. Keep scrolling. Order food. Skip headlines. Order shoes. Use AutoSend for flowers. Use AutoSend for birthdays. Don't go outside. Don't go outside. Don't leave the phone behind. No sink. Don't blink. Don't think. Don't ever let yourself feel this alive. Breathe. Ride. Watch Anthony Mann weekdays at 6 and 10 p.m. on live local CBS3 Duluth. We see you as you sit behind the wheel of your truck. We see you shake out the nerves before you pick up your hammer, your scissors, your pots and pans. As you find new ways to keep the lights on and put the pieces back together, we see you. As you straighten the rows, keep your customers safe, and crunch the numbers, we see you. As you head back to work, we see you. You've got this. We're open to help you reopen. Visit BBB.org. When news happens, CBS3 is there. We're putting in with a follow-up to some breaking news. Anytime, day or night, some more cases of the coronavirus are popping up across the Northland. The only confirmed cases in northeastern Minnesota. Not go shopping today unless you absolutely must. Do not uh, collect any supplies or equipment unless you absolutely need it today. The Northland has seen its first coronavirus-related death. For breaking stories that impact the Northland most, tune to CBS3. When a crisis strikes, cash is the best form of relief. It can easily be transformed into health services, water, food, or clothes. Cash can travel everywhere and aid people all around the world. Donate smart, fast. Donate cash. Schneiderman's helps you celebrate life's peaceful moments. Eight hours at a time. Save up to $200 on our new Beautyrest Harmony Lux mattress sets. Plus get a 365 night trial only at Schneiderman's Sleep. Northland, when you want the most new country, make the switch to Cat Country. 98.9 KTZO. I never met a girl like you. What makes you country? Number one for the most new country. Hi, I'm Dr. Charity Reynolds. I would like to remind you that COVID-19 is still around. Remember to wash your hands, wear your mask, and stay home as much as possible. Thank you. It was a historic day in the House of Representatives. Today, House members passed a bill to make Washington, D.C. the 51st state. H.R. 51, also known as the Washington, D.C. Admission Act, was approved by a vote of 232 to 180. This is the first time that either chamber of Congress has passed a bill granting statehood to D.C. The legislation would create the state of Washington, Douglas Commonwealth, named after abolitionist Frederick Douglas. It now heads to the Senate, where it is unlikely to come up for a vote. The president has also signaled he would veto the bill. Coming up in sports, could the Minnesota Wild have a shot at the number one draft pick in the NHL draft? Kelly answers that question coming right up. Watch Anthony Mann weekdays at 6 and 10 p.m. on live local CBS3 Duluth. Want to do more to help your community? The All of Us Research Program is a great way to contribute to health discoveries for today and the future. Call, visit us online, or download the All of Us app to learn how you can make a difference. Let's drive forward together. Lease a new Jeep at Duluth Dodge from only $199 a month. An award-winning Jeep Renegade Latitude from only $199 a month. It's a Duluth Dodge Blue Ribbon Lease. 4755 Miller Trunk Highway or Duluth Dodge, Minnesota. Don't risk life or limb cleaning out your gutters. 
With one simple click or call, Gutter Helmet will provide a free inspection and estimate to eliminate the dangerous chore permanently. Our certified installers will clean out, tune up, install Gutter Helmet over new or existing gutters, and clean up the work area in less than a day. Gutter Helmet blends in beautifully with your home, is engineered to handle the heaviest of rainfalls, and is backed by a lifetime transferable warranty, assuring you'll never clean your gutters again. Gutter Helmet, retiring ladders since 1981. Mariah Haberman here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the DW crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Continue the adventure on social media and discoverwisconsin.com for behind-the-scenes content and great Wisconsin giveaways, including a chance to win a free vacation. This week's featured prize package could take you to Baraboo. Just visit discoverwisconsin.com for details. Duluth's downtown waterfront district is starting to reopen. Our small, locally owned businesses have hope. They're excited to safely serve you. And most of all, they miss you. Now is the time to show your support and invest in buying locally. When you support a local business owner and their employees, your dollars stay in our community right where they belong. It gives a jump start to our economy when it's needed more than ever. We can do this. Let's show our love for downtown Duluth small businesses. Together, we are stronger. As we all navigate the challenges of the coronavirus outbreak, know that for more than 100 years, the Better Business Bureau has guided consumers and businesses from the Great Depression to the housing crash. We've connected consumers with businesses they can trust, and we've recognized businesses that are committed to uncompromising ethical standards. We're better together, and the BBB is here to help. Learn more at BBB.org. The Better Business Bureau, building trust in trying times. You gonna pick that up? Cause there's no poop fairy to do that for you. See? Take these. They're not just poop bags. They're pride bags. Because you're doing the right thing for your neighbors and for the health of the whole watershed. Gotta fly. There's a chihuahua cranking one out in Leicester right now. There is no poop fairy. CBS 3 Sports with Kelly Hinson. Well, the biggest question heading into the National Hockey League's draft lottery, besides how is this going to work, is who will get the number one overall pick? There are 15 teams in the lottery, including the seven teams that would not take part in the 24-team conference-based NHL tournament to open the NHL playoffs. The number three pick goes to the Ottawa Senators. They will also have the fifth overall pick. That left the Los Angeles Kings and the placeholder team, a qualifying round losing team, vying for the top pick. And the number one pick in the draft will go to a team which will come from the qualifying round losers in the upcoming playoffs. The second pick goes to the LA Kings. And if that was tough to keep track of, don't worry, here's a list of picks three through eight. One through three is still the beat to be determined, or one through two, rather. If the Minnesota Wild lose to Vancouver, along with the eight other play-in round losers, they will have a 12.5% chance at the number one pick in the 2020 draft. So, win-win, maybe? We win-lose? Well, to be determined. The NBA has released its schedule to resume this season, a season that was halted in March due to the COVID-19 pandemic. First up, eight games to finish the regular season, and first out of the gate on Thursday, July 30th, it's the Utah Jazz taking on Zion Williamson and the New Orleans Pelicans. The late game is a Western Conference matchup featuring the City of Angels. Kawhi Leonard at the Clippers against LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and the Lakers. Three more games will follow on Friday, July 31st, and all games are scheduled to be played in Orlando. There are a total of three courts for games, two of which are for national television. The Bucks will open up on July 31st against the Boston Celtics. Tip-off is set for 5.30 p.m. Central Time. That feels weird to say. They'll proceed to play every other day following that against the Rockets, the Nets, and the Heat, followed by four more games in six days with the Mavericks, Raptors, Wizards, and Grizzlies. The playoffs will be seeded accordingly following the results of the first eight games. I just read a concrete sports schedule for the first time in three months. That was liberating. On Wednesday, the WIA Board of Control discussed a number of rule and policy changes for this upcoming high school hockey season in Wisconsin. 
One of the most notable agreements that they came to was passing a new overtime format during the regular season. They will now play eight minutes of sudden victory overtime and then go into five minutes of three on three. If there is no winner, the game ends in a tie. The format changes in the playoffs. They will then play 25 minutes of five on five overtime before going to four on four and eventually three on three. Superior head coach Jason Kalen has been in fair, his fair share of exciting overtime scenarios, but has some initial concerns about the rule changes. You know, I love watching it in pro hockey. I, I just think it's so dynamic and it's, uh, it's just so unpredictable. Um, I don't know how I feel about it personally ending a, a playoff game or a, a season ending game in terms of like a, a championship. I don't like that. I mean, you look back, I think it was, was it Duluth East and Apple Valley had one of the longest games in Minnesota history. Um, just those things are like, you, you cherish those. And that's the hard part for me. I, I think, I think a game like that with that much meaning should be ended five on five rather than three on three. But um, it sure would make for some exciting hockey. On to soccer, the San Jose Earthquakes were the first MLS team to arrive in Orlando this past week. And they were the first to take part in a full team training session yesterday at Disney's Wild World of Sports Complex. The Earthquakes are preparing for the league's MLS is back tournament. The tournament will feature every team in the league as the 2020 MLS season returns to action. Minnesota United opens play on Sunday, July 12th against Sporting Kansas city and tomorrow don't forget the national women's soccer league will play in their tournament at 10 30 central standard time that right here on cbs don't forget that's gonna do for sports we'll be right back after the break cbs3 closed captioning is brought to you by essential health virtual video visits offering face-to-face -face interaction with your provider from the convenience of home or work the great american outdoors are closer than you think Visit a steel dealer now and get the built-in America FS56 RCE trimmer for only $199.95. Not sold at Lowe's or the Home Depot. Pick up at over 9,000 local steel dealers. Find yours at steeldealers.com. As businesses reopen, it's important to support the shops, dealerships, and service providers who hire local workers and drive our economy. I don't know anybody that works at Amazon, but I have friends and neighbors who work at local businesses. You can help. Spend your money here. Shop local when you shop online. Many deliver or have curbside pickup. And they're keeping things safe for you. Remember this when you buy and support local. Invest in the Northland. I am most excited about getting to really know the viewers in the Northland and getting to show my personality too and letting the Northland kind of get to know me. I'm a very energetic person. I'm always at 100 and I'm always excited to be able to tell stories and being able to have a little bit of fun with it too. And I think that's really, really important on a morning show as well because you need that energy in the morning to wake you up. Wake up with Austin and Jenna at 5 a.m. Kelly Hinsteth takes her job at full throttle. There's no slowing down. She's full of enthusiasm. Kelly brings a youthful exuberance to the newscast. She's loaded with energy. She's really passionate about sports. I think even if you're not interested in sports, she draws you in. She's always up and ready to go and ready to show us the latest in sports. Get to know Kelly Hinsteth weekday nights on live local CBS3. We are strong. We are resilient. And we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid, but there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. Learn more at wearebroadcasters.com slash hope. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Hi, I'm Dr. Charity Reynolds. I would like to remind you that COVID-19 is still around. Remember to wash your hands, wear your mask, and stay home as much as possible. Thank you. Well, it's nothing to cry about, but tomorrow is National Onion Day. That seems odd, but experts believe the vegetables have been growing wild for thousands of years. Now U.S. growers produce millions of them. The National Onion Association represents such farmers. It's been around for more than a century. 
National Onion Day is on June 27th because that's when the association was incorporated. And there's a day for everything these days. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow's going to be a day for weather, huh, Dave? Looking nice. Yeah, sunshine and warm. Perhaps a little too humid for some folks' tastes. But we have plenty of beaches if you can get there and, and distance yourself. We've got to keep that going. Uh, looks like we'll keep the sunshine going through Sunday. High temps in the 80s. Then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, our next rain chances. 40% shots, 60% Thursday. We'll bank our hopes on that one. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.